Hello and welcome to your 16th UDK tutorial and in this tutorial we're going to be going over the emissive and specular channels of materials. So to start off with let's create a new material and let's just call it material 03 and make that a material. Okay and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look through my content browser and by the way what I've just done here is I've dragged to the side and in Windows 7 that means this is going to take up half the screen. This is going to take up half the screen. That's just a Windows 7 tip. Nothing to do with UDK. And basically, I'm going to try and find a texture where we have a diffuse texture. And it also comes with an emissive map. Simply so I can demonstrate to you what emissive is. So I'm just going to tick textures. And I believe I managed to quickly find one a little bit earlier on. Here we go. Here's the one. So we want this underscore D, which means it goes in our diffuse channel. And here we, get, we have underscore EM, which means it goes in our emissive, or sometimes you get underscore E. And here we also have an underscore N, which is a normal map, so I guess we'll use that as well. Now let's add these in. Now a shortcut to do this, just click the thing in your content browser, and then in your material editor, hold T and click, and I just add it in a texture sample for you. So we want to do this with our diffuse, our emissive, and also our normal map. So let's just open up our material editor properly and just position things around. So let's position our diffuse up here, our emissive here, and our normal map down here. So just go ahead and link up your diffuse and normal map. Whoops. Now this isn't really made to be on a sphere, so what we can do is up here we actually have some things. We can choose it to be on a cylinder, a cube, a sphere or a plane. Now I'm just going to go ahead and choose a cube because even though it's not really meant to be on a cube either, I think it's going to be easier to demonstrate on a cube. So we have this, we've applied our normal map and our diffuse, hence we can see things. Now we're going to start messing with emissive. Now what emissive is, is it's pretty much just how much light our material emits. Now the emissive map here, when you have an emissive map, you have a black section which is pretty much the stuff that isn't going to emit anything and then that goes all the way up and obviously there are shades of grey and stuff all the way up to white which is the bits that emit the most light now if I just link this up to our emissive channel go ahead and look at the preview window to see what happens and aha you can now see this section especially in fact according to our emissive map that's the only section that's actually going to emit light but you can see this now actually emits quite a lot of light really and we can see in this section at the bottom here we actually don't have any light we are getting some light from our emissive section so emissive is pretty much just how much light is getting emitted now what we could also do if I just unlink that and move this over here by the way another shortcut if you hold M and click you get a multiply expression and what we're going to do is we're just going to times or multiply rather our emissive map by a constant. So just go right click, constants, new constant, and obviously we can just times it by something. So if we link everything up and put it in emissive. Now, first of all, there's absolutely no change, and this is because we're timesing all our emissiveness by zero, hence we're getting zero, so there is no emissiveness, because if you times anything by zero, it comes out as zero. Now, if you wonder how we had it before, we can put it as one. Okay, that's what we had before. Or if we want it to be over what we had before, we could put it to something like, I don't know, 10. And you'll see, whoa, that's now emitting a lot of light. Also, don't forget that if we wanted something lower than we had before, we could do something like 0.2. And now this is emitting less light than it did before. So, emissive, how much light your material emits. Now, another little, tr I'm showing you a lot of tricks with Kismet today, but not kismet, what am I talking about? Shh, ignore I ever said kismet, I'm not supposed to be mentioning that yet. <laughs> I'm showing you a lot of tips with the material editor today. So, anywho, what you can do is you can hold Control and Alt, and then drag a box, and you can select multiple expressions. So I'm just going to select all those, go ahead and press Delete, because that was simply to show off Emissive. Next, I want to show off Specular. So we're going to go back to our content browser, and I found one earlier by typing in Metal. Again, we have our textures tick box ticked. 
And this was it here. Let's just check if there aren't any other ones here. No, okay, I'll, I'll just suffice with this one for now. And again, we're going to use our holding T trick. So we're going to bring in our diffuse. Our normal map. And our underscore S, which is our specular map. Okay, so let's just maximize our material editor. And let's just move things around a little bit. Okay, so we can link up diffuse and normal already. Okay, so I I quite like having the cube for this. As this texture looks doesn't look like it was particularly made for cubes, but it works on a cube. Maybe it was made for cubes. I don't know. Yeah, it works. So at the moment we have our material and there are, there are quite a few metallic sections on this and they really look like they should have a bit of shininess. They look like they should shine, but they don't. Now, emissive was how much light our material emitted. Specular is how much light bounces off our material. Pretty much how much it shines. If we just link up our specular map to our specular channel and watch closely in the preview window. Okay, I can't find... Anywhere this has made a huge difference. Where have we got it here? There's got to be a section. Okay, you can probably see little glimmers perhaps, but as you can see from our emissive map, most of this is actually black and dark grey. And again, this is very much like a emissive map. Did I call it an emissive map? This is a specular map, but it's very much like an emissive map in that black means that there is no shininess and white means there is the top level of shininess so I think I saw a little bit of shining going on over here there is bits and bobs all over the place but this really isn't very strong so if we just go ahead and add and multiply so we can see what's going on multiply and we'll create a new constant let's just set that something like I don't know, 30. Because we really want to be able to see the shininess. And we'll link this to specular. Here we go. Now we can start seeing a bit of shine. So we have the metallic section over here. We have this metallic part here. And this is all pretty darn shiny. So that's really what we're looking for. And again, if we want to change the multiplier to make it lower, which we really don't in this case, because we just won't be able to see any shininess then we could do that. Now, another thing to do with specular, we can just do pretty much the same as we did with emissive. We link up a map, we can link it with a multiplier if we want, but also what we can do is we can use this specular power. If I just use the control alt box trick to move all these around, move them up here, and we're just going to put in a new constant, and this is going to be fed to our specular power. Now, specular power is pretty much how much control you want over how much shininess is shown at a time. Now I'll explain that really badly but pretty much you have to see it for yourself. So if I have it at zero it means we have no control over the amount of specularity or shininess. If I put it at a higher number like I don't know a thousand then it means we're going to have very high control so there's not going to be a whole lot of shininess at one given time. So if we just link it up with zero into specular power You'll see, whoa, now we're getting huge, like way, 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 way too much shininess. So we now have pretty much no control over our specularity, and there is just shining going on everywhere. It's just, it's chaos. So if I want to set this something higher, like uh, 500, you'll see, okay. Oh, it's 500 too high, because this material's pretty, here we go. Yeah, you, you kind of see little sections at a time. You don't you never really see a huge section of shininess and shine. Um, let's settle for somewhere at about uh, maybe 200. No, a little more. I mean, a little less. So, uh, let's, let's just go with 50. That could be pretty decent, right? Okay, let's go less than 50. <laughs> oh, I'm not liking this material. Okay, there we go. I quite like that. So as we're hopping around, we can see kind of little parts of shine at a time. We never really see huge sections, and yeah, that that 
I think you kind of get the idea, really. If I have it at a lower number, we can see bigger sections of specularity at a time. If I have it at a higher number, we can see very much smaller sections of specularity at one time. I quite like it at 20. Now, it's a shame I couldn't really find a material that has an emissive and a specular map built in. Obviously, we could create our own, but I just don't want to leave anyone behind if they don't have the right software to do so. But let's just do this for now, and let's go ahead and apply our changes to Material 03. And we can close out of that. And you can also go ahead and... First of all, make sure it's there. Yep. And then save your package. Cool, everything saved, and that picture's finally updated. If we just do a quick CSG add to demonstrate what this looks like. Just drag it on, scale it up a bit, maybe to 1.5, that'll do the job. And uh, we need a light to illustrate this properly, obviously, because it's, it's to do with how light bounces off it. So if we add a point light, and then hate dealing with things in perspective viewport, but it'll do the job. Here we go, we can now see the way things are shining and reflecting off of our material. So, anyway... That is your emissive, how much light your material emits, specular, how much light your material reflects, and specular power, how much control you have over that reflection or shininess uh, channels. And that's the end of this tutorial. Have a nice day.